So yes, let's get started with some visualizing of some data in ggplot. Yay! Yay! Yay, okay. So ggplot is a subset of tidyverse. In particular, it is its data visualization package. And yep, I am literally pouring myself a can of extra virgin juice. So anyway, here's the basic structure of pretty much any tidyverse slash ggplot bot. And I've kind of already walked us through this and shown it, but I'm going to keep showing it because and uh, ggplot is the infrastructure we're going to use a lot in this class. So first thing you do is you plug in your data. Data equals whatever your data set is. Then we have the layer called mapping, where we connect our x and y variables with the aesthetic right here. Then we add our various geometric pieces on top. And after that, each option above and beyond like labels, things like that, goes their own line and look like this. So we are going to look at the Palmer penguin data. Uh, this data set looks at the measurement of penguin species and it includes a lot of information like on their, what island they're on, their bill length, their um, bill depth, their flipper length, their body mass, their sex, and the year these, I think this is the year the data are collected. That's what we're gonna look at. Here is a plot of that data where it illustrates the dimensions of um, three, I think, penguin types uh, as a function of length and depth. That's pretty cool. Now you're probably asking yourself, how can I make that glorious plot? And that is what the next slide shows you. Ta-da! Including a warning that I didn't bother to delete. So as we can see here, we have our data. It's Penguin's data set. We've got some mapping. And those, the two aesthetics are, are X and Y. I lied. So we map X onto the bill depth. We map Y onto the bill length. And we map color onto species type. And then we use geom point, hello tubes, to illustrate with points. Now this warning tells us there are, there are two missing values. And in theory, I would stress about it, but today I'm not. And you'll notice all these additional additions under labels, including title, subtitle, as well as labeling the x and y axis, as well as labeling the color. Now I'm going to walk us through how to do it using this segment called the coding aloud segment. To, can I help you? Can I please? What do you want? What do you want? Mm. Oof. All right, so first we're going to start with our data frame, ggplot penguins. Now you'll notice that the thing generated from this is just a gray block, blob. That's it. That's our first layer. Now we're going to add on the mapping where we have mapped on x to bill depth right here. You will notice that I have to scroll. This is what I've been grappling with for the past four hours. And I don't know how to fix it. Uh, so yeah, so we'll just be doing this. Fun fact. Next, we're going to map the bill length to the y-axis. And that is this next line right here. Ta-da. 
And as you can see, the plot has changed to add a second dimension right here. <sighs> Hello, Tuki. So, um, as an aside, so Tuki is usually active in the afternoons while Archie is more active in the mornings. So that is how you can figure out when I'm filming. Because if there's an Archie, it's in the morning and I'm much more energetic. And it also means I'm, my day is being productive. If you see me filming in the afternoon with Tuki, that means something has gone awry. <laughs> so that's our second. So we're, we're on layer three, technically. Now let's add geo and point, where we represent each observation as a point. And we can see here, like all, literally all we did was add a layer plus our geom. Okay, next. Our next step, you'll notice we kind of had to go back a little, but uh, it's kind of for dramatic effect. And we want to map species onto the color of each point. So we go back up into aesthetics and add in color equals species. Now we want to add a title because it's, it's important to describe what you are doing so other people know without having to crawl through your code. Here we've created a label called title equals build depth and length. Also, uh, I hit some weird bottleneck with this aesthetic where like it highlights, but it's not highlighting the whole thing. And it doesn't matter. <sighs> this is the end or beginning of a long week. So here we've added a, a title, Build Depth and Length. Now let's add a subtitle to describe the various dimensions. And we literally just uh, add a comma and another layer, say subtitle equals, and then we put in our subtitle. Boom, it's magic. It is magic. Thank you, Tukes. I need the keyboard, please. Please, before I murder you. Oh, I would never actually do that. Uh, in case that wasn't clear. Okay, so this picture is coming together. It's we're able to see the various dimensions and label it to communicate that information. Okay. We're going to also label the axes to be a little nicer and cleaner. So they're not just the raw variable name. And we do that by under labels. So we make a new line, say X equals build depth, Y equals build length. And boom, it appears. Next, we're going to label the legend as species with a capital letter so that it looks nice and it's consistent. Yeah, it seems silly. But I want to illustrate how to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we add a caption to describe where we got the data. Just as that last little piece, and you can see it here with caption. And all we've done is in text, in, as a string, uh, source, colon, Palmer Station LTR slash the Palmer Penguins package. Ta-da! And finally, we can use a discrete color scale that is designed with the intent of making our plots more accessible. The uh, Virtus uh, scale is literally designed for one of the more common forms of color blindness. Now it doesn't cover everyone, but it makes your graph more accessible, especially when you're trying to convey additional information with only color. I tend to caution against this with just using color because color printing is an issue. 
And so either like a texture or a shape, something that works in grayscale. But for the sake of this illustration, ta-da. And all you do to change the color scale is scale underscore color. There it is, D for discrete. Now, how do I know this? Because I Googled which one, like which color scale. All this stuff's hidden in the documentation. And if you're really lazy like I am, you can just um, Google it and it will come and give you the documentation if you are too lazy to go into the help pane right here. Okay, so that's the plot. Ta-da! And the code is underneath. I gave up on getting it to work as uh, one thing, but oh, my perfectionism. Okay, so I forgot to record my um, exit. So yeah, also I am indeed wearing a Batman thing because it's cold. I'm also having the heat blasting because it's cold. So yeah, um, bye. Yep, bye bye.